When we started doing research for this site, we discovered that there's an underground river right next to the building. And I thought, oh, this is kind of incredible. I've always wanted to do a river of terrazzo. And here I was presented with a concourse that's 30 feet wide and 350 feet long. Terrazzo is an ancient form of art, and it, you know, from the Roman times, it is basically a combination of um, an epoxy liquid with a very fine sand, marble dust, a pool mix, and small aggregates to more or less hold the whole epoxy slurry together. The opportunity to play with it is always the artist's delight to take something kind of ugly and make it beautiful. The terrazzo that I'm, I'm playing with in um, Bellevue is what we have termed, uh, after working for so long, as the works. It's my chance to throw in as many um, aberrant and beautiful pieces of, um, of flotsam and jetsam of the sea, of the river. Glitter glass, iridescent, dichroic glass, cane, shells. I really wanted it to have that, that richness of um, uh, almost of emerald, you know, the idea of the, um, the water just shimmering like jewels. The process begins with staging. Uh, which means you're bringing probably 2,000 to 5,000 pounds of material to the site in containers, meaning the resin, uh, the variety of the mixes of glass, and you've got a mortar mixer, five guys that are un of unbelievable um, strength to be able to lift these 100-pound sacks, and the mortar mixer starts going. Usually there are three acts going at the same time. Before we get to lay the floor, we have to prime it. And given that I'm doing all this exotic line work, we're gonna to have to lay quite a bit of the line work in too. As soon as I um, have the chance to throw things in and start composing, it gets covered from their trowel work. So it's that uh, kind of joy of creating on that unknown edge and at a scale that is almost really sort of athletic. I mean, you're just moving really, really fast. You've got water and you're, they're grinding and so it's just this big mess and then they'll take a squeegee, a big handheld squeegee and pull, you know, like an archeologist would look at what we've just discovered and you'll see this sheer floor. People can never believe how much work goes into it on site or what it looks like during the processes that is actually going to come out as timeless as it does. It's really, you know, really getting something we've never done before. So that's, you know, really wonderful <laughs> to see an experiment in the, in the making. You know, when I, when I started composing the, the river, all I had to do, again, was look at the composition of the, the concourse. There's conditions, both because of where an information desk is or because of the lighting conditions, where there's a darkness or there's a, a real feeling like that's where a river would pool. And who knows why I'm thinking these things, but it just seems that that's where it would be dark and there would be rocks. And this is where it would be maybe a, a very shallow part of the river. And I, I absolutely love rivers, so the thing of moving space around or moving all of my um, pieces around these undulant shapes, just as a river would, where they would catch or fall or break apart, has been a lot of fun for me. What I intend to bring is an intimacy to a big public space, and I've used the phrase, I really want to slow the space. We are rushing, we're on a fast take in this culture, and certainly we buy our tickets to places all over the world to look at incredible architecture and experience beautiful public spaces around the world. I think I'm hoping we're making one. You can't 
cannot step into a river twice because the waters are ever flowing over you. So uh, that is really the idea that I want the river to bring into people walking to make big decisions within the council chambers, people spending their day there. They are, we are in this river of life.